Hello, and welcome to the Sega Sonic the Hedgehog speedrun guide. This guide will be a comprehensive explanation of everything you will need to know to learn the Beat the Game category for Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. If you need help installing the MAME emulator, there will be a video linked in the description that covers installing MAME and configurations for Sega Sonic, as well as setting it up for co-op. But this video will focus on utilizing speedrun strategies for the single player Beat the Game category. This run is a great game to play if you're new to speedrunning, or would just like a game that doesn't require tons of dedication to learning because of how linear the game is. The game has extremely intuitive level design that continuously pushes you in the right direction, so the name of the game here is just to keep moving forward. The timer starts when you choose your character, all of whom play exactly the same and have no distinction from one another other than Sonic being an incredibly boring choice. Once you select your character, you're going to want to start mashing your jump button to skip an intro cutscene, and then the gameplay will shortly begin. Because the run is actually somewhat front-loaded with tricks, I'm going to jump ahead a bit and explain general movement briefly. The game is displayed in an isometric view, but your general cardinal directions move exactly as you'd expect. Left goes left, up goes up, and so on. Unfortunately, the diagonals, which are the directions you generally will be moving throughout the game, are jank as hell possibly because the game was intended to be played with a trackball, and so sometimes when you're running on diagonals, you'll just have to alternate your key presses like this. Nothing too technical, and there's no exact pattern to follow, just kind of mashing until we get the desired direction. The best way to get good at the movement in this game is to simply practice the game and get a feel for how it all works. Now let's get back to the start of the run. We're dropped into this jail cell where we have to break the bars and escape. The best way to approach this section is to hold down right and no other directions when going to break the bars as this lets you easily slip through with only breaking one bar instead of two. I'm going to be speeding up the run through sections where I don't have anything to say, such as this cutscene here. Now we're at the start of the first of the seven levels in the game, Volcanic Vault and our first input is already linked to a concept called jump acceleration. In some situations, going from a standstill to moving is a little bit faster when you jump. So here we are going to jump, and in this case it actually also activates a graphical error that we call the boulder glitch, where the boulder that chases you becomes invisible. If you are to keep up optimal movement down this hill, you can actually make it all the way to the bottom without the boulder appearing, but considering that this saves an extremely small amount of time, don't worry if you can't get it. Some of the top runners still can't consistently hit this trick. Anyways, moving on from boulder glitch, we're gonna get launched up and stuck in the floor here. The fastest way to get out is just hold any direction, so don't mash. We're gonna do another jump acceleration here and then move on to these walls of fire. You can't just run straight through, so you will either have to stop shortly, or you can do a more advanced method of running a bit to a side direction, which brings you at the right speed to perfectly make it through these. The rest of this level is pretty straightforward, so let's move on to the second level, Icy Isle. First up in this level is this section where you have to dodge these ice cubes that slide out at you. There are a few different ways you can dodge these, so all I will say is don't try to stay up against the wall here because it's usually what gets you knocked off. After the ice cubes, there are some sets of monkey bars that you need to climb across. The first set of monkey bars can be skipped by falling off the ledge and respawning right before the second bar. After that mess, there's a short scripted section and then spikes that come up. The first set can be skipped with jump acceleration, and the second one you can squeeze through the two holes here or this third one around the outside. The areas you can pass aren't too much wider than the characters, so be prepared to practice this part a lot. I personally try to line up with this line in the ice as a visual cue to get through the bottom opening. At the top of this incline, make sure to take a bit of a wider turn so as not to catch the camera, and then make your way to the downhill section. The downhill section has a trick that makes it slightly faster called lead running, where you line up exactly on this edge, but you need to make sure you're not too far down, or else you'll get stuck when you have to jump over the pits. Otherwise, you can just run like this and dodge the spikes. Now, onto the third level, Desert Dodge. For the first section, you'll want to hold down and left, and make sure to jump over the sand mounds. You'll then approach the two antlion pits, which is where this level gets frustrating. Walking into these slows you down, and touching the middle of them gets you eaten. This can be a death sentence for time, especially the second one, but you can skip the whole thing, or at very least skip most of it, by running up the side of the pit and jumping over. You can do this on either side, but taking the inside corner is definitely quicker. After that, 
you'll run a bit more and eventually reach these caterpillar things. You can run around them without bumping into them easily by following this path. Afterwards, the level is a straight shot for the most part. Just note that spamming jump in the quicksand actually slows you down, so don't do that. Next up is Trap Tower, and this level can be very tricky, but overall it's very short. Once you run past the first section, there will be a huge straightaway with these crusher objects. If you line yourself up on the bottom half of these crushers, they will provide an easy cycle to run through. Stopping and starting precisely is kind of tricky, but one trick we've found for doing this consistently is lifting your entire wrist off of the keys to stop and just letting the character walk into the back of the crusher, then dropping your whole wrist onto the keys to start the movement again. You'll have to wait for each crusher in the first section, then you can skip the entire second set, and the third you'll only have to wait for the first one. Once you get to the ladder, climb on it, and line yourself up as far to the right as possible. You'll be able to climb through the bombs and go straight up the ladder, and the stage is finished. Landslide Limbo is a little bit more straightforward. After the first ramp, you will encounter a new and unique mechanic, these swinging vines. Once the shadow appears above you, perform a jump without any directions and your character will grab the bar. The next platform's ramp leads to a horizontal section. The movement here can be optimized by holding down right until the character lands in the sand pit section. After the turn, try to stick closer to the left of the platform to take the furthermost catapult. Once you land on the next platform, take the middle catapult. For this section, stick to the top route for the first two ramps. If you're lined up, holding up and right will bring you back to the center lane, but if you don't quite get there, make sure to position yourself there. Once the platforms stop crumbling, be ready to turn right, or you'll get caught in this goofy Wily Coyote contraption, which can cost a fair bit of time. The next section leads up to the only boss fight and biggest skip in the game, so I'm going to let fellow speedrunner Spectral Platypus explain this one. The boss skip is performed by taking a specific line to Eggman in order to clip through his hitbox while the player has active iframes. But first, we have to avoid taking damage on the ramp leading up to the boss. Start by lining up with the border between the middle and right lanes on the little square platform leading up to the ramp. After clearing the first two sets of fireballs, stick to the right to avoid the last row. Sticking to the edge of the platform without stumbling or falling off can take some practice. Occasionally, the rightmost fireball will be lagging behind the rest by a little. This can make it very difficult to clear this final row unless you're sticking as close to the ledge as possible. If you do get caught by the final row of fireballs, the skip can no longer be executed. You will have to perform the fight regularly instead. If you have made it to the boss arena, now intentionally take damage on the electric fence on the right side of the stage. Colliding somewhere between the second and third poles from the top should line you up for a decent chance at this skip. Once your character lands on the floor, hold forward for a brief moment, then release up and hold left until the character runs into the boss, ideally somewhere between the crack on the floor and the two stones indicated by the red spot. Keep holding left and jump as soon as the character is on that same crack texture on the floor indicated by the blue spot. If done right, the character should clip into the boss and continuously deal damage until the fight is over. The exact position and timing of your jump will change according to where you collided with the boss previously. Getting a feel for the timing can take a fair bit of practice. This boss fight marks the end of Landslide Limbo. Wow, how informative. Thank you, Spec, for that detailed breakdown of the boss glitch. I do have a few more footnotes about this skip before we move on to the next level, however. If you're having trouble coming into this boss with enough health, you may want to abstain from the monkey bar skip in Icy Isle. This trick can be pretty precise and doesn't have easy backups if missed, so I'd recommend practicing the regular boss kill. Here is a demonstration of the regular boss kill. Notice how I'm only holding down the left direction. Now let's move on to Wild Waterway. The first thing we need to do is to make sure we don't fall off this bridge until it breaks automatically. The first half of this level is completely trivial, the fastest way to approach it is to hold down and right and let your character bump off the wall repeatedly. You won't run into any bombs this way, so just keep like this until you reach the wall to climb out. Jump into the bottom wall to bounce yourself off of it, and then try to grab the wall around this area. Before we continue here, the upcoming section of the level may be the least beginner friendly part of the entire game. 
There's no way to sugarcoat it. Wild Water Way is hard. So first, I'm going to show you an optimized run of the section, and then I will discuss in more depth some strategies. Okay, you ready? Watch closely. Take notice of the input display here. My strategy for tackling this section is to hold down left and tap up to adjust the character up when needed, which is almost half the time. I also jump only whenever I get close to the edge of a platform. Okay, so now let's break it down a bit. At the end of each raft section, you want to jump to the exit, either the wall or the level end platform, basically as soon as you see them come on screen. The second one can actually let you skip over this entire raft here. You need to avoid jumping too high up into the top wall or else you will fly all over the place into the water. In the event that you end up dying, you will most likely respawn at the edge of the platform, and due to the character's skid animation, it will keep repeatedly killing you if you try to run. Jump in place before you start movement until you are in the center of the raft to continue. I would recommend using safe states to practice this section until you feel confident with it. Finally, we are at Eggman Tower. This level uses basically the same principles as the crushers from Trap Tower. The spike bars drop when they appear on screen, so the time at which a spike bar is lowered or raised is dependent on your position. There's a million ways you can approach this level, so the cycle I'm going to show off is the one I found to be most time effective while still relatively easy to pull off, and it is the cycle I used in my 1053 run. First, I try to line myself up slightly above this middle groove here in the bricks at this corner, usually somewhere on the first brick past the middle. You can jump over the first four, wait for the next one to go up, and then run under the next three. And then you can jump over the rest like this. When you get on the ladder, try to get on closer to the middle so the camera doesn't get stuck. The second section has a similar setup close to the middle, and here you can jump the first three, wait for this section of four to rise and run under all of them, jump over the next three, wait for this one, then run under these two, and jump the final two. Now the game is basically done. The timer can end one of two ways here. During the final descent, if you run out of time, then the timer ends when the game over text appears. It's faster to get the good ending though, so run down the slope until you reach the final door. Take care not to take the corners too tightly, or else the camera may lock up. Once you reach the bottom, head through the door and claim your victory, as you've just completed a run of Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. I do want to say off the script, if you have any other questions about running this game, feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to leave my Discord in the description if you want to reach out to me there, but you can also get in contact with me through YouTube or through my Twitch where you might even catch me running this game. I'd seriously be happy to assist any potential runners in any way that I can, so don't hesitate to reach out. One last thing is a huge shout out to Spectral Platypus and Hypnotics, who have not only been instrumental in shaping the meta of this game, but have been helpful with the count countless write-ups they've helped me with for this. Also another shout out goes out to Rodonic01 and Toughcracker who have both made tasses for the game. And last of all, good luck and I hope you enjoy Sega Sonic the Hedgehog.